It's Michael Clark back with another edition of the Pack Pride Podcast. I'm flying solo tonight, um, but we have a very special guest. NC State quarterback commit Cedric Bailey is joining the show. Cedric, uh, been committed a while now. How are things going? Uh, things are going great. Um, I'm, I'm getting well with the coaches and players and everything. It's like a little adjustment for me. So uh, I'm happy it's all done. Um, I don't have to worry about my recruiting no more. It's, it's just I'm locked in with NC State right now. No doubt, man. Uh, we'll start there. How has life changed for you since you committed to the Wolfpack? Um, it, it's been better. Um, even though like I don't really like how like just, everybody just keep asking me questions about uh, NC State and everything, but that's what comes with it. But uh, my my life has changed a lot. Um, I feel like everybody see me, uh, uh, especially like NC State fans, they see me as like a, a bigger figure for, for uh, NC State, and they see me as a a game changer, like a game changer recruit. So I feel yeah. like it's just, everything just changed. Obviously, it's different with quarterback recruiting. You're the leader of the recruiting class by default, but you're a, you're a natural leader anyway. I think that's pretty obvious. How important was it for you, Cedric, to jump on board early so you could be a leader in this class and recruit other great players to join you? Um, that was very important, and it, it especially with uh, getting other guys to come to come play with me. Um, we actually just got a uh, running back commit, uh, Scott, Jaden Scott. And it's, it's great. Um, I, I got to have those guys. I ha- got to hold those 24, 24 guys because that's what I'm going to be playing with. That's what I'm going to rely on. So it's, it's very it's very great to hop on early so now I can get all these other guys to come in and play with us. You know, how do you feel like, speaking of Jaden commits recently, uh, how do you feel like you guys can, I guess, kind of, you know, work together on the recruiting trail and, and, and just and really build something? Um, that's great now that we got a, a running back and me as a quarterback. Now it's, it's, it should be more easier to get uh, other receivers and other DBs and everything because we we started it off, so it's going to be way easier. Well, let's go back to your visit. When you went to NC State, you were obviously very interested. They made it clear that you were the top quarterback target. Did you go up there with the intention of committing, or was it the visit that sealed the deal, or, or how did that go down? For it was a visit. It was the visit. It sealed the deal. Um, and before that, the coaches was communicating with me well, but mainly it was a visit that sealed the deal. I loved it there. Uh, that right in downtown was perfect part of NC State. Um, when I was there, it felt like I was loved. Like everybody loved me there. Describe that feeling when you know, okay, you've been recruited a long time, and you say, all right, this is where I'm gonna spend the next four to five, three to four to five years. What was that moment like, and when did it happen for you in Raleigh? Um, it was actually a feeling of relief. Um, got to get all that off. Um, it's, it's really it's a game changer for me because I don't, don't want to have to worry about like impressing other coaches and impressing because I'm I'm committed now. I'm with my with my guy with my uh, team, so I'm I'm great. Coach Roper was instrumental in this deal. He has a really good track record of developing quarterbacks. Quarterback position is all about continuing to grow, continuing to get better. I know you want to be coached and coached hard. Talk mm-hmm. a little about Coach Roper's impact during this process and how you believe he can help you become the best player you can be at the next level. Um, great, uh, Coach Roper had a great impact on this. Uh, my commitment because I, I know, like I, I just from being in the film room and. The quarterbacks meeting with him, I know that he could like get me to the next level. I see it because the way he coaches those guys and um, prepare them, I, I could see him doing that for me and helping me out and get to the next level. So it was it was very important that I got to talk with Coach Roper and get to know him because now I know that I got someone I could trust and someone I could rely on. You were able to probably go in meetings and see how he kind of operates in practice. Talk a little about what makes him such a good quarterback coach, in your opinion. Um, he's gonna push you. He, he wants you to be great no matter what. Um, he he not gonna let you. He don't, he don't want to see you fail or none of that. But he's gonna always let you know what you're doing wrong. He's not gonna just let you. If if he if he love you, he's gonna talk to you. He never gonna just let you go. He's just go away without. Even if you make a bad play, a good play, he's gonna always go talk to you and give you constructive criticism on what you did. So that's that's what make him great. Coach and I's air raid system you know, is one of the most well-known offensive coordinators in the country. It's a very quarterback-friendly system. Guys put up huge numbers, and he's had bad success everywhere he's been. Talk a little about, uh, you know, peel the curtain back. Coach and I, what makes him such a great offensive mind now that you've gotten to know him? Um, You know, that's what I like. I like an air raid system. That's, that's the type of quarterback I am. I like to throw it, air it out. Um, 
with mixed coach, well, I really didn't get to like involved, get really involved with coach or not, but I could see it. I could see it when I was at spring practice and everything. He calls great plays, make great calls, make great adjustments. He let the quarterbacks do what they want. Like, well, as far as checking plays and doing everything. So he really, he, he'll he call something, but he's really laid back with it. He'll let you be loose with it. So that's what I like. I like to make my adjustments and let and let me play and make a play. So coach, coach and I is a great coach. And, I love the air raid system. No doubt. Uh, Coach Doran was obviously pivotal in this whole thing. You go to a school, one, but you go play for a head coach. When you went to Raleigh and, and just throughout your recruitment, you had a bunch of offers. You sit down with Coach Doran. Did you just get a different vibe with him than you did the other head coaches that recruited you? And, and just, I guess, what kind of sold you on Coach Doran and his vision that he has and what he's established there in Raleigh? Um, Coach, Coach Dorian is a really cool guy. He's, he's really cool. Um, he's a great, great talker. He's really communicative, communicative with his players and um, with recruits and everything. So it is 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 really big. He's a great coach. He's way, I say, way different from other coaches because they don't they keep keep in touch with you. How he 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 lets you know everything from the jump. He explains everything from the jump. So other coaches. I don't know, but they're like iffy. So I, I really trust Coach Dorian. Like, really, Coach. Coach Dorian. What was his message, Cedric, during this thing to you? I mean, quarterback and head coach. That's a really unique relationship. It needs to be strong, special. You know, the face of the program per se. What was his message during, from start to finish, and it, it, was it consistent the entire time? It was. It was really consistent. His message was that. If you come here, you're gonna be great. It's no matter what, no if, ands, or buts. You go work, you go out to work, it'll be great. And I feel like that that's what's gonna happen. So let's talk a little bit off the field. I mean, guys, I mean, I think all the fans have watched your film. I know you're a great quarterback. What is Cedric Bailey doing when he's not training, when he's not working in his downtime? What are some of your hobbies, off the field things that you really like to do and enjoy? Um, off the field things, I'll probably just play video games or something, but I'm really I'm really focused into football and school and stuff, so I rarely have time for that. So got you. Um speaking of, of football and training, now that you're committed, you know, the, the focus is is obviously your team, spring ball and all that type of stuff, and then getting ready for your senior season. You're probably like a lot of great players, your toughest critic. What are the areas you're really focused on? I mean, you had a monster season, but what do you feel like you need to do or can do to take your name game to the next level this fall? Um, I, I really need to focus on keeping my 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 mechanics mechanically uh, sound during the game because, like, I could go in like a one on one quarterback session and, and be great with my mechanics, but when game time comes, I, I tend to get sometimes off of my mechanics. But I always tell myself I always got to talk to myself and tell myself to like. Lock in and focus on your mechanics through every play. So it's not going to really be a big deal this year because in practice, I'm looking great. So no doubt. Who do you model your game after? Who are some quarterbacks that you really look up to and uh, just kind of mold your game and take some from each? I guess there's probably multiple guys. Who are those? Um, like they're in NFL right now. You can be college, NFL. Who are some guys that you really look up to? Um, a guy that, that I could really look up to and probably compare myself to with his gameplay is probably Justin Herbert because he's my size. He he runs when he needs to, but he's always a pocket passer first. And he he, he airs it out. He's a gunslinger just like me. So. Yeah, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you. Quarterback you, NC State is known as producing quarterbacks just as well as anybody in the country. When you were up there on your visit, you see Russell Wilson on the wall. You see Phillip Rivers on the wall. All these guys that have come through the years. How does that motivate you now that you're part of that group? Are you going to be part of that group here very shortly? And and what is it like that, you know, being able to – what will it be like being able to see those type of pictures every single day? Um, that would be a great feeling and great feeling seeing those legends and if – if I'm fortunate, I could be one of those legends too. And it's going to be a great feeling just to come back and see myself on that wall. Uh, everybody walk in, see myself on that wall, bro. That'd be crazy. What's coming up for you, man? You uh, v- recently visited NC State. Is there a, like, is the next time you're going to be there? Is that your official visit or, or what do you, what's yeah. next? My next Let's- time is going to be an official visit uh, probably around June 16th. That's a, that's setting up to be a pretty big weekend. I think yeah. all NC State fans are closely watching. It's pretty calculated. You're the quarterback. You're going to have some of the best receivers in the country there, top targets. 
how critical is it for you to be in town while they're in town that weekend? Guys like Jonathan Paler, Terrell Anderson, Alex Taylor. I mean, it's got to be important, isn't it? You kind of cut out that. I said, uh, talk a little about that weekend, that official visit weekend. How important is it to be there with guys like Jonathan Paler, Alex Taylor, and Terrell Anderson? And, and what's going to be your message to those guys? Um, it's it's gonna be very important for me to be there because now I could get to get in there and let them know what is it what it is and what it's gonna be. Um, my message to them is that you go come in, you go come in, you go out to work. No matter where you go, you out to work. So you come in here, you, you probably got to work, and you go be the you could be the starter, but you got to put in that work. But I want I want I want to talk to all those all those receivers, especially those receivers, because I need someone need those guys to throw to. So I need to get. When that week we can't come, I need to talk to all of them. What are you going to tell them about what you believe? What's your vision for NC State when you are there? What you feel like y'all can build as a team? You went out again. Yeah, sorry, yeah. you cut out again. Anyways, what are you what are you going to tell them about your vision? What do you believe your vision is for the program and what y'all can accomplish together that week? Uh, um, of course, I'm gonna tell them that we're gonna win the championship. That's that's my that's my main goal is to win the championship together, and we're gonna make it far. No doubt. Last couple things: NC State fans are very vocal all over social media when you committed and when NC State was recruiting you. Describe the feeling as a big time recruit when you see that type of support from a fan base um, from the from the jump. Oh, that's a, it's a great feeling um, to know that uh, the whole way. But uh, it's a great feeling to know that I have those fans at NC State because now I know on game day they got our back at home games, especially. So, absolutely. Uh, you know, last thing, if you know, last couple things. You know, what would your message be to NC State fans? What can they expect from you? I mean, obviously, you got a big senior season ahead. You're going to try to win another state championship. But what, what, it, what do you, what would you like to say to NC State fans? And what should they expect from you know you as a player? <laughs> they will expect a winner, a leader, and a playmaker. So my my, my number one thing is. It's a winner. That's all we go do. We go win. I know y'all like winning, so that's one, the number one thing. Last thing, uh, you know, recruiting is, is so big now. We've talked about it in in general, in depth. What is your role like day to day now between now and December? And who are some of the main guys that you're really focused on trying to get to join this class with you? <laughs> My role right now is to to keep recruiting, and you know, I was go. I wanted to get those guys uh, t- like Terrell Anderson, you know, Jordan Playler, um, Ken- Kenan Jackson, all of them. I need all the receivers that we can get. So we, 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 I feel like we're good in the backfield right now. So it's looking tough. No doubt, man. Last, last thing. I, just in general, it looks, I mean, y'all, you were happy when I spoke to you, but I think it's, has it really set in with you that you're going to be playing in the ACC in front of 60,000 people every week? Yes, sir. There's no doubt. What is that feeling like? And, and now that that's really set in, that this this is gonna this is real. Um, it's a, it's this is a great feeling. Now, now I know I kind of know where I'm going at with, with my life, and I kind of know what I'm gonna do in the next couple of years. So it's, it's a really great feeling. Gotta ask state championship last year. You guys are probably a significant favorite this year, but you're gonna have to earn it. What is yep. is going to be the key for you guys to get another state championship? Um, the key is going to be to stay focused and play physical every game and have a perfect game plan, and we have to just stay focused every game. So that's that's going to be the key. Look, man, this has been an absolute pleasure, Cedric. We appreciate it. We'll have you back on here if you'll do it again. Best of luck during spring ball. Look forward to seeing you in Raleigh soon. Congratulations on the decision, man. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me.